Hello, welcome to Greenhouse Live. Here, um, here well, obviously we're not in Townsville here. We're actually in uh, in Steve's study uh, doing Greenhouse Live after after what was a very very pleasing win. Um, it got a bit closer a little, for a bit in the second half, but uh, thirty to twelve win over the Cowboys up in Townsville will take any day of the week. And and Steve, um, thanks for hosting us here at your house. Um, it does sort of, I do sort of wonder whether we should take the camera around and it'd sort of be an episode of Grand Designs as well. But um, <laughs> well, Steve, welcome to uh, welcome to Greenhouse Live in front of the camera rather than behind it. Yeah, I, I hate being in front of the camera. <laughs> I'd much rather be behind, but we do have the tripod. Uh, in operation um, when we're not on the road, so we, we that's, do. A, that's a, that's we a do. plus. Not the first time we've used an inanimate object instead of you holding the camera, <laughs> Steve, so I don't know what that says. But um, look, um, now Steve's told me before we start, I need to tell people to uh, please be, be feel free to make comments uh, and we'll read them out. And also, um, and hopefully people understand this a bit better than I do, but but feel free to share this video with your friends as it's going. Apparently, that um, that gets it out out to more people. So um, I would hope all your friends are watching Greenhouse Live already. But um, for those one or two that maybe are not smart enough to do so, um, share it to them. So, Steve, um, it did get hairy in the second half. There's no question about that. But but a very very pleasing win and a, and a, and at three and one and a good points differential, it really does put us in a very very good position. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the best start since two thousand and five, three and three and one, yep. um, and we can't argue with that. Um, yeah, I, th I think um, the Raiders really deserve to be ahead by by more than uh, yeah. they were at half time, um, and they certainly, when it got to eighteen um, twelve, um, you know, the Raiders' dominance really wasn't being reflected in the scoreboard, but I think I think it finally told the Cowboys really really um, made some um, great uh, runs um, in the second half and put the Raiders under a lot of pressure, but the Raiders with, withstood all of that, yeah. and then the Raider uh, the Cowboys just made too many errors. I think they were they were out in their feet and they just made too many errors at the end. Definitely, definitely. So if we go right back to the start of the game, I thought it was an excellent start, and I thought it was an excellent start from our forwards. Um, you know, when we lost to the Storm a couple of weeks ago, I said I was really concerned about our, you know, perhaps forwards not being um, that big and actually struggling um, to uh, to get any decent field position early on. And I think I think tonight was, was very, very good. I thought that... Um, Louis um, and Sutton in particular, very much Sutton. I, I think he's improving um, amazingly well. Really gave us a platform early on and um, and put us to that position where we are getting good metres and good in good field position. Yeah, well, uh, I, I thought Sutton had his best game of um, uh, his career in green so yeah. far last week. Yeah. And he's certainly surpassed that tonight um, yeah. I, I looked at his stats at half time he was already yeah. past 100 uh, 100 meter mark yeah. from about 12 runs he really he really put in so um, look you know I think he's, he's got a lot of promise he's still young yep um, he's taken a little while to find his feet in Australia but he, he's, I think he's certainly starting to find his feet now um, yeah, and the other forwards, Papali, Soliola, of course, you know, they're, yep. they're, they're just sensational. Um, well, I still, yeah, I'm still not convinced about Papali as a prop. I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced that we get the best out of him there, to be honest, but well, that's, that's obviously the way it fits in for the team at the moment, but I'm, I'm still not 100% convinced about that, I have to say. Yeah, well, you know, I think Papali and Soliola are the be are the best two props at the club right now, um, and um, you know, um, it, it, it's but Sutton certainly um, uh, putting up a challenge to Dunamis, Dunamis Louis, um, and um, tonight, um, you know, I, I, I think we, he, he showed what, what we might get once Joe Tarpany comes back into the team. Um, because uh, I think we're really missing that go forward right from the start. I, I understand why we're, we're, uh, we've split Papali and Soliola, but uh, I think Sutton potentially offers much more impact than Dunamis Louis. 
Yeah, I look. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I, you know, like Louis. Louis seems to be one that at, on the greenhouse. You read the comments, and it's almost. I think I talked about this last week. It's almost like he's just holding a, holding a spot temporarily. Um, I don't think Ricky sees him like that at all. I think Ricky Ricky rates him very highly, and I think Dynamis the the last two games particularly. Um, that first twenty minutes or so, I think he's done a terrific job. I think he's he's run hard and fast, and he's made some good carries and got some good meters. He's not a dynamic player who's going to you know break through the pack and 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 do anything spectacular. But I think I think he's doing exactly what Ricky's looking for him to do. Oh well, I mean, I, I certainly agree that that Ricky has that view because yep. he wouldn't have re-signed him for yep. the length of um, time that he has yeah. um, if he if he didn't. Um, but I, I just think potentially Sutton showing some signs that you know that that starting prop position um, you know might be in his sights. Apparently, our vision, our um, the vision might be a bit blurry at times there. And I know, look, just looking at that, it it may be dropped out. Hopefully, that might be the Wi-Fi there. So hopefully, we'll, we'll continue on with this. But there it goes again. We'll just um, keep an eye on that. But thank you for that that comment. We will get to comments in general, but. Um, yeah, we'll we'll just plow plow ahead. I think it's it's coming better. Um, yeah, no, look, I thought that so that start was very very good, and and we saw um, a great try from Kotrick early, and then that set that we had after that first try was amazing. I thought where you saw um, video going, sound going in and out, Steve. We might ah, need to check that. So. Might to... We might just, just check this. We might start. just no, we won't start again. I think I think it's. It's okay, but we might just check that it's all connected there. And Bateman was the five tackle set, and and then we had that kick down the down the side. I think we've got that bit better, hopefully. Um, I think we we we've, we've gone off Wi-Fi onto four uh, G. Oh, so, okay. So we've gone off Wi-Fi. We, do we have the MBN here in <laughs> Kingston? Uh, no, not yet. No, no. Well, there you go. You need to come out to uh, to far flung places like Franklin and. I see, uh, I see. I also need to fix the camera angle. <laughs> oh, okay, I wouldn't worry too much about that, Steve. But um, yeah, so only people from far flung places like uh, Gungarland get MBN apparently. So uh, here in uh, the leafy surrounds of Kingston and Monica, we don't uh, don't get don't get MBN apparently. Well, well, it's about to be installed. It's about to be installed. There you go. Only only about eight years after most of Canberra got it. So, anyway, um, no, no, that that's that second try we're talking about. Well, I just thought you know that the forward set up and and to get to that spot and then that kick down the side and the and the kick over the top from Rapana to Leilua was just superb. Yeah, they they started with an awful lot of energy. Um, terrific, terrific set they made. Over sixty meters, um, the forwards, yeah. and it just set it up for the explosive backs. Yeah, and then we did we did at times um, go off a, a little bit. I thought we we um, we just gave them a little bit of possession, and we it was really possession that um, allowed them that uh, first try that they got with Cooper, and and a little bit of a mistake from Sam Williams. He got caught out, out a couple of times there in defence. Um, not totally surprisingly, because Gavin Cooper is a is probably the best hole runner in the game in, in that back row position. Scores a lot of tries, obviously. Um, he's had Jonathan Thurston next to him for most of his career, which would make you know, any back row look pretty good. But, um, yeah, Sammy did get caught a couple of times. But um, it really was both tries that we gave up was just... Um, too much possession on on their line that or on our line that um, allowed them to score. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I think I was mentioning to you during the course of the game, we we have um, the second best defensive record in the competition after after uh, three rounds, eleven yeah. points on average per match. Yeah, uh, and the Raiders gave up twelve tonight, which yeah. is pretty much on the average. And um, I'll tell you, if if they restrict 
the opposition to 12 mm. points a game, they're going to win a lot of games. Oh, it's superb. And, and the thing that's so superb, Steve, I think, is our attitude. And, and as I said to you before, sure, at times we've made some mistakes, at times we've dropped some silly ball, and there was a couple of silly ones tonight, you know, that, that play off the scrum, which was just you know crazy sort of pass, that sort of thing. Um, we've made some blues, we've, we've dropped a few balls, we've it's still giving away a few too many penalties at times that we shouldn't give away. But just the attitude, when we, when we turn the ball over in a, in a, in when we've really got to defend in an attacking position for the other side, we just stand up and we look like we want to stand up and we, we have the right attitude in defence, we, we, we're defending as a team. You really have to give Ricky a lot of credit, I think. You know, like he's got a lot of he's got a lot of um, criticism over the years, and 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 not totally unfairly, I don't think, because you know our record under him hasn't been great. But when you think that Ricky talked all summer about we're going to be strong defensively, we're going to have a different attitude in defence. There's no question he's delivering on that. No, well, I mean, I think that's right. Look, look, the things that. Were, that obviously needed to be de- addressed were defence and yep. game management. Yeah, and we've seen game management yep. in in spades. Uh, we've kicked more field goals than any other other team so far, I think. Um, oh, and and um, we're we're um, look in those clutch situations. You can see how much they've practiced um, those situations under 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 um, fatigue yeah. during the off season. Yeah. Um, the the defence look there's a few there's a few problems on that left edge at times, but um, and tonight some problems around Sam. But look, overall they've they've defended extremely well and you know, the the plus the plus is that they defend those errors this yeah. year that they weren't defending in the last two seasons. Yeah, agree. So ideally we'd like to make a few less errors because we're still making a few. But, but um, yeah, I think we defend those very, very well. And I think um, I think Sam Williams had a, had a reasonable game again tonight. I think, I think he controlled the game pretty well with his kicking. Um, but I also think that in, in the line, Jack Whiten's making a massive difference. I thought I thought he had a very good game tonight. Again, not necessarily setting, setting as much up, but that try we got just before halftime, the third try... That was um, mainly due to Whiten's attack on. Uh, can't, I'm not too sure who the Cowboys player was, but Croker Croker got misread a tackle, and 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 they were about to be in. They were about to be in front at half time, and Whiten made a great tackle, and then did a great follow up play that that um, you know got us in the field position to score the try. I'm trying to remember who scored that third try before just before half time, but. Um, yeah, that that really set us really set us up there that um, to to be in that position and his his strength in the line um, is is making a massive difference. I think you know compare that to where we were with Blake last year. I think it's making making a massive difference. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, last week he um, produced five errors, but um, I I can't really recall a serious error from Jack tonight, and no. and um, you know he I think he's settling into the role he's he's going to do well in the role yep. and um the big plus is the defense and yep. as you mentioned you know there's some try savers there and um look, look yeah, we know last year that was a critical problem yeah and it looks like it's um being fixed and he'll continue to have an error in him because that's a little bit the way he's played his whole career white and is it is it he's he's had that that mistake um he's not the only one like that i mean hogson Hogson, despite what probably Matt said last week, I think is probably still our best player. But I mean, he he made a couple of blues tonight. He he, he threw that silly pass off the scrum and kicked that one basically into the crowd. You know, he's um, so there's still errors there, and there's probably a few too many as as what we'd like. Um, but still developing well, and even even someone like a Horsburgh coming off the bench, you know, gave away one of those silly penalties as I've been frustrated about early on. I think part of his problem is he actually leans on the play when he gets up. So he's often second or third man in. He leans on the play to get up. He doesn't sort of um, quite have the balance that some of the other players do, and, and that seems to give away some penalties, but he was a much smarter in the second half. But but when when we are under pressure, we just... We just seem to have such a different attitude. That's that's the thing that's so exciting me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, on on Horsburgh, um, 
look, he does give away um, the odd penalty and makes the odd error, but yeah. um, I'm really excited about the potential he has, and um, I'm, I'm sure he's going to be a very, very good first grader. Yeah. Um, it's just, um, you know, I think he, he said at one point in the preseason, what's what um, what sort of football? How would you describe your your game, and how would you describe you as a footballer? And he said, tough, passionate. Oh, and, no question about uh, that. No question about and, that. And, uh, look, yeah. he, you know, he, he's a really exciting young prospect. And, um, and he's one I was talking up last year watching the juniors, uh, I don't know, juniors and in Mounties. But when I've seen him come into first grade, I've just seen him here. He does have that um, perhaps struggles at times with the pace of the game, and that, that means he gives away some, some silly penalties. I think he's, it, and he has, he's only probably given away one, one or two in the last couple of weeks. But... If he continues to work on that, I think he'll be a very, very good player. The other one that the other one that obviously we criticised a bit for doing some silly things at times, but I thought had a brilliant game tonight was Joey Leilua. I thought I thought he was superb tonight, both both in attack and defence. Yeah, well, I mean, what about that try? Yeah, uh, Charles Nickel Clockstad threw a terrific pass out to Rapan. Yeah. Ran down the sideline, kicked it into in into the the middle of the field, and guess who's there? Yeah, Joey Leilua, and that was an absolutely superb try. I think possibly the best try that the Raiders have scored all year. Oh, a spectacular try! Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm as far as my favourite ones are the ones where we do everything right, like. Like well, well, sorry, and that was everything right. But my my favourite part of that try was the forward lead up was was just brilliant. But but as far as spectacular goes, that's that's great. And I would also argue that that one that Sam Williams put the kick through last week was was perfectly executed, which is what we're trying to see. But but yeah. for spectacular, no question. Um, and and certainly the the captain's going very well too. He's he's perhaps not kicking as well as as we would have liked. He missed those couple from the the sideline. I think it was a bit windy up there, but. Um, he actually now has had got eighteen hundred points, I believe, and right. um, and also came, became the third highest games record holder for the the Raiders behind Jason Croker and Laurie Daly. He, he surpassed Simon Wolford um, today, who which, which I know Simon Wolford played two hundred thirty three games for the Raiders, and I've heard your views on maybe that he shouldn't have played too more, much more than thirty three, but. Um, you um you would like to have kept Luke Prittis at the time, but um, That's true. <laughs> but um but yeah, just just keeps getting better all the time, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Look, um, and the really pleasing thing about the way um, Croker's playing is his defence. He is making some first yeah. class one on one tackles, um, and I, I I don't think the issues are around the um, left edge defence. Uh, Due to Croker, yeah. it's it's just that edge is still just settling in, yeah. Um, yeah. and they're finding their combinations in defence. Yeah. Okay, let's let's start to go through some comments. So, Steve Spencer, how good was that? Yes, I think we've been talking about that. Robert Greer, great start to the year. Yeah, it is. It's our best start since two thousand and five, apparently. Um, now, two thousand and five, I think we had a buy in the first round. Then we won our next four games. We were on top of the ladder, looking pretty. Um, I think by the end of the season, we ended up second last, Steve. So let's hope that that uh, mirage of two thousand and five is not what we're seeing here. No, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I can remember Clinton Shikoski absolutely going crazy in one game. I think against the the Dragons in that um, that early part of two thousand and five, but. Uh, we started to get injuries and uh, geez, it went to poo by the end of the year. I remember that one. Um, Michael says, brilliant game by the boys. Pete Taylor also says that. Ivan says that. Always the same thing. Steve Spencer talked about the vision going blurry, so hopefully we've fixed that now. Um, Stephen and working off the um, 1995 technology that is here in Kingston, uh, or infrastructure, Um Peter Taylor, Clance Nickel Coxteg playing really well under the great under the high ball. Yep, he's just he's he's been solid every every time after those first couple of mistakes against Gold Coast. Yeah, well, I mean, just occasionally he looks like he's um, just a bit under a bit of pressure, um, but then he manages to control the ball and look, you know. What another exciting player! Yeah, uh, and you know, surely he's going to be um, one of the buyers of the year. He must be the, one of the best value buyers of oh, the year. I think so, say. so far, yeah. Um, and um, look, exciting player. He's a natural fullback. He gets great re- um, kick return meters. He knows where to position himself. Um, look, 
he's he's just going to be a very very good player for us, I think. Yeah, well, look, so far it's been terrific from from what was considered to be probably a, a risky position at the start of the season, with obviously Jacko going to five eight. That um, he's gone from strength to strength there, so that's that's terrific. Nathan saying it's good to see we can win the close ones. We would have lost a lot of that last year. Well, that's true, and and in the end it wasn't close. We won by eighteen points, but that just goes to show that if you are able to withstand the pressure. And look, I'm not convinced the Cowboys are going that well. So, you know, I'm not going to um, say that we're, we've got all our problems solved. But but when you can withstand that pressure, it does come. And we saw that. They were the ones that started to tire in the last 10 minutes. We got, we got a couple of cheap tries and, and suddenly won easily. That's right. Uh, you know, they, they look danger, dangerous, the Cowboys, through the middle of that um, uh, second half and towards the end um, even. But the final the final 10 minutes it was the Raiders that came home the stronger and that that's a huge difference to last season yeah uh Mark is just agreeing with uh Nathan there uh Gunther well done not perfect but on the right track yes I think we've covered that um John Christopher Whitehead best on field um look he was right up there I'm, I'm probably there was a few I don't think there was necessarily one big standout tonight but but uh, that was really probably his best game of the season. He, he's he been a little bit quieter so far in the first um, three games before that. I, I, I think he has been a little bit quiet. But, um, I mean, what about the effort to kick the ball ahead um, late late in the game? Oh, yeah. And uh, he regathered. Yeah. At the, at the, well, the Cowboys are attacking. Yeah. And he just turned um, defence into attack, and suddenly, suddenly. Uh, Jordan Rapana is up the other end of the. I think it was Jordan Rapana up the other end of the field, just getting to the try line. Yes, no, exactly. And uh, all the people in this apartment block probably are well aware of that now. After me shouting at that time, I don't normally watch games in apartment blocks, Steve. So, no, it's um, a bit quieter. Yes. <laughs> um, um, Nathan's saying Shannon Boyd will be kicking himself now. Well. Um, yeah, I'm not particularly worried about Shannon Boyd. Um, he made his decision, and uh, I'm happy where we're at. Let's say that. Uh, Tim Boyd saying White is horrible at five eight. Well, sorry, Tim, I'll disagree with that. Um, I think for the reasons we've talked about, uh, Craig's actually somewhat agreeing with that too. Well, okay, I'll let you guys have that opinion. I think he shored us up defensively, and I think he's only going to get better at five eight. So, um, I was never expecting him to be the best five eight in the first. Um, six games of his career. Of well, I know he's played there before, but but six games sort of this season. And I mean, Darren Locker wasn't a bad player. He wasn't particularly good at five eight in the first couple of games he played there either. No, indeed not. <laughs> so he took a little while as well. I I think that Whiten is very much on the track that Ricky wants him to go. Uh, Steve Spence asking who got man of the match. I didn't see that on the Fox tell. Um, I think they pretty much go to the next match pretty quickly. They did interview John Bateman, but I don't think that was a man of the match. No. no. Well, who do you? Who do you think? Oh, well, we, we, we've You're... been told we have to do that at the end, Steve, the 3-2-1. Oh, okay. so, okay. um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the 3-2-1. I'll, I'll, I think I'll hold that back from my through green eyes, Colin. Well, you, but you've <laughs> told us we have to do that, Steve. You've got to follow your own rules, surely. Um, Andrew Evans saying, hopefully we can start to get some big, bigger crowds now that we've won a few. Well, for 6 o'clock Friday games, and, and Andrew, you, li- you live in Sydney, so... Um, I'm sure the six o'clock Friday games have been as tough for you as anyone. That, um, but the two home games we've had, um, one where storms were predict- predicted and didn't come, and the other one where storms were predicted and came a bit and then absolutely came after the game, as we saw last week. Um, I would have thought the crowd so far have been very good. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if Andrew is referring to the away crowds, um, cause, but the Cowboys crowd has been poor um, all year. So well, they've only had a couple of games. Well, they've had two or three games. To be to be fair, the the place has been devastated by a flood, and there's probably um, you know not a lot of people that have got a lot of spare cash fighting around at the moment. So um, and I've probably got some more important things to worry about. So um, sure, we got great for people to come out to the football, but um, there are some other things going on. So um, I think we need to be a little bit fair um about that but but certainly andrew one of the things one of the big advantages we've got now steve is and we'll talk about future games coming up but but now with two sunday home games coming up it really does give us a big big opportunity for a lot of crowds to come out but also to really cement what is a very good start yeah well i mean 
the the Raiders crowds love Sunday afternoon. Unfortunately, yeah. we I think the next one is a Sunday night at six ten p.m. So it's not the best of time slots, but it is a triple header. It is so, going to be a triple header next week. So, so you can you can get out in the afternoon um, and watch um, Mounties and the Jersey Fleet team in yeah. the, in the lead up. So yeah. so um, we'll talk about we do get a big crowd. Yeah, exactly. And and look six ten. I mean six ten in Canberra is not quite. Um, on a Sunday night. There's not normally a lot of traffic at 8 o'clock on a Sunday night, so I don't think it's going to take too long for anyone to get home coming out there next week. Um, obviously, if you live in Sydney, it's a bit different, but um, yeah, even if you're going back down to the depths of Tuggerong or something like that, you're not going to take too long to get home, I wouldn't have thought. Um, Albert's saying, hey guys, question, would Caesar come back in for Williams if he's fit next week? Now, it sounds to me that Caesar might miss another one yet, so I think that might not be... Um, apparent next week but but clearly clearly unless someone else gets hurt that's going to be a question that's going to have to be resolved in the next couple of weeks steve your thoughts on that um well i mean i think the two players offer different things yeah. uh sam is probably better at organizing and organizing the attack uh but the defense is his weaker point his relative weakness um aiden's Possibly not as strong as an organizer as Sam, but his defence is probably a lot sounder. So I think it's a it's a difficult choice for for Ricky to make. I, I you know listening to him on the radio this morning, he regards the loss of Aiden Caesar as as a huge loss. Uh, so um, you know it, it, I, it's 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 difficult to choose between them, um, but I suspect Ricky Stewart will will bring Aiden Caesar back into the team once he's fit. Yeah, and that's that's my view as well. I think to me, Aiden's our number one halfback, and I would be keeping him there. But as I've said before, Sam is a fantastic backup, and we don't lose a lot when he's there. So that's that's good. Um, now Steve's saying something about camera and stuff like that. Might be focusing on the light in the corner. Um, okay, all right. I think we'll we'll work with it, Steve. Um, with what we've got, we're, we're normally doing this in the dark half the time after games, and particularly now <laughs> that daylight saving ends tonight, that we'll definitely be doing nearly everyone in the dark. So it's probably better than that. Uh, Louis is holding on to the ball this year, which is a change from last year. Well, I've, we've talked about Louis. I, I think he's a good player. I think he's doing the job that he's there for. He's solid. Yeah, it's about as good as we're ever going to get from you, I reckon. Peter Taylor's saying Whitehead was man of the match. I'm not too sure if he's saying that's his man of the match or whether that was what was awarded somewhere or other. I'm not sure. Uh, Tarzo's saying our defence was incredible. We're in the top four. Uh, I, mean, we're, I think there's a bit of typo there, but we're top four now. I believe we only made nine errors. Yep, I think we're actually equal top right at the moment because um, no one else has more than six points with the Storm yet to play. So... Um, let's take that at the moment. Probably will change tomorrow. I expect the Storm would beat the Dogs pretty easily, but um, we're going well, which is good. I think we might be third on the ladder on points differential, but right at this point, four games in, I'm not too worried about whether we're third, fourth, fifth, but um, the main thing is we're going well. If, we, if we're top four after the weekend and we stay there, we can't ask for much more. Well, let's hope so, but there's another 20, what, 22 games to go yet. No, that's not right. 20, 20 games to go. Um long way to go yet but but um and, and and look to be fair you know i'm not too sure the cowboys are going that great the titans certainly are not going that great and newcastle probably haven't really hit their straps either so you know we, we haven't gone and beaten the top teams yet so oh, we're not getting carried away with this but but the attitude and the, the difference is is so much so much better than last year so it's good so tarzo's getting going on about that is is what do we think we'll finish in the top four my view tarzo is that's still a long long way away i think that we will have to get a lot better. We'll have to stop making as many mistakes um, if we're going to be any chance to do that and to, to challenge the top teams. Um, but we're where we want to be. And, and and as I said last week, I think we're where we want to be with, I think, the ability for a lot of improvement left in us. Yeah, well, um, uh, you know, again, I'll mention what Ricky Stewart was saying this morning on the radio. Um you're saying every week we're aiming to have some small improvements. Yes. And it seems to me that that's what they're, yep. exactly what they're doing. Yeah, that's right. And, and I, you have to be happy with that. That's exactly right. And I think I think we'll see games a little bit like Melbourne where, where we're just a little bit outclassed and, and that maybe um, will continue to happen. I don't think that's um, totally, um, we're totally past that yet. But, 
but um, that we're beating the teams we need to beat. Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, we don't have a cough button like they do on radio here. Um, Colin's talking about, um, I think, the halfbacks as well. Tough one. The tries the Cowboys made were from Williams' defensive effort, but he had a decent kicking game. Yep, agree with that. Um, Tars are saying our first half was good. Our second half, we had to hang tough. Rapana, Joey, and Kodrick finally scored great tries. Yeah, look, you know, I've said before, I'm not worried about our attack. I think our attack will will come, um, and we started to see that. Um, Ivan's saying we defend our... Um, Mistakes a lot better. I think we certainly agree with that. We talked about that. Um, Steve's talking about the betting odds as well. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, yeah, finally, defend. There's a lot of comments there about uh, better defence. Um, yep, yeah, Tarzo's confirmed we're third. I think we've got positive differential of 34. Um, that's just ahead of a couple of teams. Uh, Jack's chicken. Yeah, Jack's kick and chase is awesome. Uh, yep, says Ivan, agree with that. Um, there's a few comments there. Um, putting their opinion up on, on whether we should have Caesar or, or Sammy, um, which is good to see. Uh, Andrew Evans talking about White and growing in that role. Uh, yeah, and mental state's been commented on a lot, which is there. Um, good to see people commenting with each other too, which is good. That's all it's all about. Uh, Defence has improved out of sight. Uh, Kotrick doesn't seem to be as prolific this year. Well, I think he had a good game tonight, and look, that'll come. That'll come. I mean, he should have scored a try last week. Well, in right at the end, so he scored what one last t- tonight? Week. No, two tonight, didn't he? No, no one. One because one, he that's right because he passed that one back to Croker. Um, yeah, his time will come. Don't worry about that. He's he's still playing pretty reasonable, I think. Yeah, well, you know, his he. I mean, he was had the amongst the highest tackle breaks, if not the highest, last year. Um, and he's a bit down on some of those stats, uh, like tackle breaks and metres gain. But tonight he was back up, back up there, uh, um, equivalent to his um, form last year. I yeah. think. Craig's actually saying no. He actually meant to say he was good. <laughs> White was good in that position. Okay. Um, yep. Uh, Steve uh, Steve Spencer's asking uh, too early to speak about Origin contenders. Um, well, the fact that half our team is is not Australian means that we're probably not necessarily going to have a lot of Origin contenders because most of the blokes we've spoken about, so um, Sutton and Bateman and Hodgson and um, uh, those guys will not be uh, Whitehead, of course, um, will not be playing Origin. Neither will, will Nickel Clockstead um, and a few others. So there's there's not many Australians in the team. Um, look, I would think that. Um, Papali would be in the mix again. He, he, in some ways, he actually is probably playing the position that they want him to play for Queensland because he's playing up front. Um, he tends to come off the bench and do a pretty good job doing that for Queensland. I would think they would stick with him. Um, yeah, you look at the rest of them. Tarpany's, Tarpany, Rapana. I mean, obviously Tarpany's not playing at the moment, but um, Rapana, most of those guys aren't Australian, so, um, or don't play for Australia. That Rapana could arguably be Australian. Well, I, I mean, Joey Leilua is possibly a, a Blues contender, but... Uh, um, you know, Joey, well, he was centre well, of the year last year, I guess, but and, uh, I, I but think I, there'd be a few I, ahead of him. Yeah, I can't, I can't see them picking picking no. him. They've, they've certainly overlooked Jared Croker for yeah. a long time, and I don't think they're going to look in his direction. Um, yeah. But um, So I suspect the Blues will um, not select any Raiders and... Um, Harley will be the main man yep. selected for Queensland. Yep, yep. No, as I say, I'm not too worried because there's a lot of our good players aren't Australian. Um, Matt, oh, Matt Livy at Sidman. Hello, Matt. Hopefully uh, the first birthday party is going well. He says, says, good to see Steve on the screen. So there no, you go. Not. Okay, no, he, he doesn't agree. Wants you back, Matt. So uh, Matt's loving our pommies. Uh, also saying Lipana was awesome. Uh, cooking game was good. Um, Sam is saying uh, pack a lot more mobile now and better lateral movement in the middle third with a lot less missed tackles through the middle. Absolutely. There's there's a lot, lot less missed tackles through the middle. There's, they really aren't going through us in the, up the middle at all. They they I mentioned last week they've had to really go around us. Today they... Today they didn't. They got a couple up the up the, more the middle third, but that was that was from close in. But but we are certainly not seeing big gaping gap 
big gaping holes in the middle like we were last year where, where teams just seem to walk through us sort of halfway and, and set themselves up for good field position. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, we've spoken about this before. But, um, players like um, Junior Paolo and Shane and Boyd have been very good players for the Raiders, but um, it's it's clear that um, the longer they stayed on the field, the more errors they were making in defence, yep. and, and they weren't good laterally. Yep. And we've got more mobile forwards who can cover it. Yeah, which is good. But but as I said, we have to have the sort of early grunt from players like Louis and, and Sutton is always going to be the question because I think we're still probably a little bit behind where we were previously for that. And tonight was really good because they, they performed that. Last week was pretty good. Storm, they were, they, they were well overrun. So that's still, I think, a risk for us. Yeah, well, uh, but that's why I was, I'm so pleased with how Sutton has come on in his two starting games because I think he potentially could give us that oomph up front yep. um, along with Papali. Uh, well, Tarzo saying, I heard we're taking home games to England next year. No, Tarzo, that was April Fool's. That was last week. Um, the Raiders, for anyone that didn't see it, the Raiders put a thing on the website saying that they were going to take six home games to Northern England. Um Next year, um, I think probably the thing that gave it away too is they were talking about playing North Queensland and Gold Coast away in the middle of that, um, which would have been a fair trip back to avoid the cold winter in Canberra. Um, no, that that was an April Fool's joke. Um, Steve and I probably have the opinion that we'd like to see the Wagga game being an April Fool's joke too, being rather than being realistic. But but anyway, we're doing that, so um, we'll live with that. But uh, I would prefer to see that at home. But anyway, that's um, that's life. You got any comment on that? Well, I I, I think if we've got home games, uh, I'd prefer to see them played at, played at home, particularly as Raiders fans are asked to travel a lot further distance um, than um, most other clubs. If you're if you're in Sydney, um, you know you're a Rabbitohs supporter. Uh, they can afford to give games the home games away because they still get eighteen games um, yep. in Sydney. Yeah. Um, exactly. So you know, I I don't think Canberra is over serviced for 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 matches, um, at home in Canberra. Yep, yep, no, agree. Um, so I think a couple of others have said about that April Fool's Day. Um, Matt saying the first birthday was great, which is good. And then Daniel finally, I think this is probably the last comment, is that the great GE Daniel is starstruck. Well, not only are you seeing the great GE Daniel, but you're seeing him in his his nat well. Maybe his natural habitats at um, Canberra Stadium, but but actually in his home. So as I say, uh, we could probably take the camera around the house, barring the um, internet connectivity, of course. But um, take the camera around the house and uh, sort of a grand design style program, I reckon, Steve. I don't think we'll be doing that. <laughs> No, he has done very well with the renovation of his apartment. Um, and the helicopter's just outside for anyone that was probably going to ask that um, you uh, have been accused of owning a helicopter a few times in the greenhouse. I have, but it's um, wild exaggeration. <laughs> wild exaggeration. No, he only owns a Learjet, so um, <laughs> I think we're getting a bit silly now. But look, okay, um, good win tonight. So next week, we, we did talk about next week a little bit, but but next week is Parramatta, who are playing probably right now. We're not watching that, so I don't know how they're going. But um, that is a real opportunity, I think, again, at home to um, to get another win. It's going to be late Sunday afternoon at 6.10, um, which will obviously be pitch black by that time with Dalit saving going. Um, it really is a good opportunity, I think, with these two home games against Para and Broncos to to keep it going. And, and, and look, Para seem to have improved this year. They've, they obviously went from being top four a couple of years ago to being awful last year. And... Um, but they are they are looking a little bit better this year, and they'll be a tough test. And obviously, Junior Paulo coming back, playing against the Raiders. Um, but we we really do want to keep this momentum going. Absolutely, and um, look, I think I think the Raiders can do it because uh, they they are a lot tougher. Um, they're a lot tougher in defence, and they're a lot tougher mentally yeah. um, this yeah. season. But it does go to show that all we have to do is drop off that tiny little bit, and we'll be back to where we were. 
So, you know, it's it's fine line sometimes with this that, that you know, if we drop that intensity and maybe against a, a team like Parramatta who's, who's perhaps not got the reputation, we certainly suddenly drop that intensity, we'll be back as, as poor as we were last year. So, you know, I'm sure that's in the back of the coach's mind that we, we need to be up every week. Yeah, well, they've certainly got some strike and, you know, but, you know, I'm sure a lot of Raiders fans will come along to... Uh, uh, Give Blake Ferguson a lot of. Uh, oh, that's right. Uh, I forgot he played <laughs> Yes, a really warm welcome in to, yeah, back oh, to Canberra well. Stadium. Yeah, well, Blake. Yeah, it's been a lot of. Well, I guess you won a premiership in between, so good luck to him. But, um, yeah, no. So um, other Raiders, <laughs> other Raiders results today. It's, Stephen, it's six six para sharks. Oh, si- there you go. Thank you for that. Six six. Five minutes left in the first half. I think that must be. We haven't been rabbiting on for that long, surely. No, we haven't. Um, so, uh, other Raiders results today. Steve and I actually went out to Seafit just before the game tonight. The Jersey flag team was playing there. We got beat narrowly by the Roosters, 22-20. Probably a little bit unlucky. Missed a couple of what should have been pretty easy conversions, Steve, and that probably was about the difference. It was pretty tight the whole whole way through. Yeah. Um, I, I did see a bit of the under-18s before that. We lost to Illawarra, which... Was disappointing because if we had have won that, we would have. That was the last game of that SG ball before the finals. If we had have won that, we would have made top four. I think we've got pushed down to fifth now. Um, that was a pretty good game actually for under 18s, and um, it was ebb and flow. But we probably just, as young kids tend to do a bit, panicked a couple of times when we didn't need to, and um, they were just a bit good for us. They were top, we were third, I think, before this week. Um, and I think we also got Sorry. beat, Steve. I think you were watching. I think you've been watching football for about eighteen hours today. Um, I think we got beat in the sixteens and the girls just before that too, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We we lost um, Harold Matthews. Can't quite remember the score, but it was by a fair margin. And the Tasha Gale Cup team lost by fifty eight to four. Oh, oh wow! Ouch. Okay. Um, but you you know you know you're the mock. You haven't oh. been to a junior reps game all season, and you were the mock. No, I haven't. No, I went. Well, we've lost others. So, anyway, well, hopefully we go all right. But, um, no, look, there's, there's still to be some bit of talent in that 18, 18 side, I thought. And, um, yeah, there was a lot of talent. Yeah, yeah. So, there's, there's stuff coming through. But, of course, you know, how many how many spots will we have for Australians going forward? It's, you know, um, it's, it's a little bit restricted right at the moment. You know, maybe if we're willing to watch our junior reps, we should be going to the north of England to watch it. But um, the other unfortunate thing today was that the um, Raiders, Canberra Raiders Cup reps, ah, yes. uh, they play under the Monero Colts moniker in the country championships. They were in the grand final against Illawarra South Coast today and they suffered a fairly large 42-10 to 10 loss at Mudgee Glen, Widow, Glen Willow Stadium. There you go. That is really going through the results. I know Steve was devastated about that. I, I'm still trying to work out how you can have a grand final on what is the 6th of April, isn't it? But um, I don't quite know how that works, but I think they've had that um, interleague thing before the season starts and the local competition does actually start tomorrow, I believe, in uh, with the full round. So um, plenty of football happening, which is great. And as we said, next week there's a triple header at, at Canberra Stadium. We've got Flag and Mounties and um, first grade, obviously. Mounties um, this week play tomorrow. I... I think they play West, is that right? West, West Magpies. Magpies, yep, yep. So um, that's tomorrow up in Sydney at their home ground, Albury Keach. So, look, I think we've covered absolutely everything, Steve. Uh, um, been a pleasure having you in front of the camera. You haven't given oh. three, two, one points. You got me for that. Okay. Um, I am going to say uh, I'm going to give Leilua three. I'm going to give Sutton two because I just think that he set the platform early on and I'm going to give Whitehead one. Yeah, I think um, Sutton and uh, Sutton Sutton might figure in my three, two, one when I when I write my uh, as I saw it tomorrow. Oh, okay. So Steve's not going to give it away. He's probably going to watch the game three more times before he writes that tomorrow. So, um, but, but what people should do is uh, go to the gh dot com dot au and uh, put their three, two, one votes in in the fans' choice player of the year award. Um, uh, we vote every single week. Uh, and um, we tally the votes right through the season, and we present a very nice trophy at uh, at 
after the conclusion of the season to our, our Player of the Year. Um, but you can also vote on the Greenhouse Facebook group. The two places, the only two places you can vote for the Fans Choice Player of the Year. Okay, so so between the Fans Choice on the Greenhouse, the Facebook, the the watching us on YouTube now, you're on listening to us on SoundCloud. Look, if you absolutely have no life and you've got you know um, forty hours a week to watch um, Raiders stuff like Steve does, then um, go for it. You've got the Canberra Raiders Cup, you've got everything. So. Um, I don't think we could co- cover that any more comprehensively than what we have there, Steve. So I think that's time to say goodbye. And until next week on Sunday night when we'll see you again, go Raiders. Go the Raiders.